Just what are your early impressions of Olivia Nadeau? Now that he's, he's with the group, and um, I guess how do you see this experience benefiting him, you know, being able to practice with the team and get integrated a little bit? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I've been around him a few other times. Um, I've always been impressed being around him. He carries himself very well, carries himself uh, quite maturely for, for a young guy. Uh, he's had a couple outstanding years uh, in the Quebec League and, and a couple really good playoff runs, too. So uh, he has a great touch around the net. He's a big body. Uh, we're certainly excited uh, to have him in our organization and have him here you know, next year. Uh, I think this experience, you know, similar for Oslin to, to – to see and feel the level of competitiveness, intensity, uh, preparation uh, that's required to be a successful playoff team, successful playoff player. Um, I think that there's just incredible experiences to, to watch how some of our best players prepare and go about their business. Um, and then, and then to see how you can fit into that. You know, like I've told both of those guys and Austin obviously is hurt right now, but um absorb this experience, but also fight for ice time. You want to mentally prepare like you're pushing to get into the lineup and make my, make my decisions hard. For both of these guys, Nadeau and uh, Austin, like what questions have they maybe expressed to you? And like, what's your process like of helping these guys acclimate to the game here? I think the first thing is, is relationship. I'm a relationship-based coach. Um, and I, I don't think you can have uh, very important conversations with people until you establish that relationship. So, um, I, you know, Osland early on has just asked more about, uh, you know, the intensity of the games and how we practice. And, you know, we just had those casual conversations. Um, but I do believe is, is the more time you get to spend with them, the more I get to know who they are as human beings, then those conversations start to happen more organically. Uh, and, and the more honest you can be with them because they understand you're coming from a place that you're trying to help them. You, know, you came back from two other series. Um, you came back from the surge that they had to tie it at the end of the game and win it overtime. What's the confidence level that you guys have now after being able to withstand that? Yeah, I think the confidence is, is high. It's probably as high as it's been all year. Um, you know, the guys have always believed in themselves. And I think we've always known we had a good team in there. Uh, but I said this the other night, it, it took longer this year. And it's understandable. We, you know, we had... Uh, you know, one of our top defensemen, Kale Clegg, was gone all year. Uh, Riley Sheehan was gone all year. Uka Pekka was gone all year. Um, and then you had a lot of young, young kids in, in huge spots. Um, and there's adversity to go through uh, with that. So I think that, you know, the, the, the approach we took coming out of game two uh, that, that the guys took, that we took as a staff, uh, just let's, let's worry about one game, uh, really resonated uh, with our group. I think it worked. I think it showed. Um, and then those next eight periods, we were outstanding. And then the third period, we were awful. Um, and I think there's a lot you can learn from that, though. And for us, some, if you're, some teams can play passive and – solve pressure and kind of sit back usually those teams are older and savvier teams that can play like that we we can we're, we're not good enough to play like that we are our best when we're on our front foot and we're an attacking type uh, style and the lesson that they have to learn as much as i told them in between second and third let's stay in attack mode it was just natural Game seven type atmosphere, the crowd, uh, a lot of them going through it for the first time. Even even a guy like Mason Yaps, who's older, he's never been a first line center in a game five with winner take all in the playoffs before, right? So these are new experiences for most of the group. Um, and we just sat back and, and tried to hang on and that's no way to play. And uh, credit to the group, we were able to flip our mindset heading into overtime. Uh, and, and played a lot better and obviously took advantage of an opportunity that came. What was it like playing in front of so many Amherst fans on the road on Saturday night? That was one of the more special things I've ever been a part of. Um, I've been fortunate to coach in a lot of big games internationally, NCAA championships, you know, world championships. Uh, that was insane. Uh, right from the start, we were up in the little coach's room, up in the kind of this little cubby hole, basically. And, it was 45 minutes before the game, and, and we're not even out there for warm-ups yet, and you're hearing Let's Go Amherst chants just raining down. And, uh, and, then, and then throughout the game, and then walking off after overtime and seeing that, and then, and then probably four or 500 of them waited an hour or so for us at the bus. Um, 
I think it was just incredibly unique and special to see. Uh, very appreciative of our fans for, for their level of passion and engagement. Um, and, I, and I also give credit to our guys because uh, we had that same, we were game five in Utica last year and, and we had a good fan base there, but it wasn't that. And, and the guys have made their team a team that the fans can fall in love with. Uh, the grit, the togetherness, the, the pluckiness, for lack of a better term, um, of this group has resonated with this fan base. And, and you could see it uh, there that night, and it was, it was really special. What is Falk might have been the best player at Prospects Challenge in the fall? How have you seen him really continue to, to take steps you know, throughout the season? I'm just, uh, I can't even put into words how proud I am of that young man. Um, we're talking about a guy who is uh, more of a perimeter speed skill guy uh, a year and a half ago. That has now transformed his game into um, being a pest at times and, and tenacious and cross-checking guys and standing up to Dumont and Walcott and cross-checking matches with them and being one of our better penalty killers. And, and uh, it's just, it's been a really impressive transformation. Um, something that, that he's been working hard at for, for the last 18 months. Um, Cause it's not always about the player that you want, just want to be. It's about the player you need to become if you want to play in the national hockey league. And, you know, he needs, you know, we've been meeting with him about this for since, since rookie camp two years ago, uh, that he, he needs to be, a, a, become a middle six secondary skill guy with speed and tenacity and competitiveness and winning puck battles. And that's his path to the national hockey league. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy to play that style. Um, but, but his level of buy-in to, to being a winning hockey player here, especially in the last this whole season, but really in the last couple months in the playoffs has been really fun to watch. Is competitiveness the one trait a guy has to have to be able to maybe flip that switch and adapt to that sort of role to, to make it to the next level? Yeah, I think competitiveness, um, you know, he's always had competitiveness. He was just channeling it, I think, in other ways. His competitiveness was more towards scoring and offense, which a lot of young players is because that's what they've done in their whole career and that's what they've been praised for and that's what they've been given ice time for. Um, and, and so now it's, it's about taking that competitiveness and then, and then turning it into a style of play uh, that's necessary for you to become a great player here in North America and try to climb up the ladder and be a guy that can be called up and play in the National Hockey League. So um, it's easier said than done. It's, it's one thing for me to, or Michael Pekka or Mike Weber to sit down and watch video of these guys and talk about these things, point these things out in clips. He has to live it. He's the guy that's got to go into areas to get cross-checked and punched and, and slashed. And um, it's a hard thing to do. And so it takes competitiveness, but it takes some guts and some bravery as well. With everything you guys went through in that last series, the first playoff series for a lot of these guys, how much more confidence do you have just with you guys going through that battle and, and taking on the next series? Yeah, I think confidence and, and understanding. You know, that's what the meeting was about yesterday. Um, I, I had them talk mostly. We talked as a staff a little bit, but I just I asked the simple question: What did we learn? What did we learn from the series? What did we learn from Game Five? What did we learn in the third period? What can we take away? What are these key things that we can take away? And 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 because you don't want to just live experiences, you want to learn from these experiences. Well, you, ha you have to have some reflection. Uh, to learn from those things. So I, th I thought the guys had some incredible uh, things they talked about yesterday uh, in that meeting about individually and collectively, the confidence we've gained, um, how much character and, and heart um, and, and togetherness that they prove to each other. I think they've been doing that a lot in the last two or three months, but coming out of game two, We've we kind of mapped the path forward, how we need to get better. And there's there's three main areas on the ice uh, that we needed to attack, and, and we did. And the guys did a really good job of those. Uh, but the fourth was we needed to have a little more. We played hard in Syracuse the first two games. We needed to increase our level of whatever the F it takes um, because that is how you win in the playoffs. Um, it's not just about your skill. It's not just about the playmaking and things like that or the systematic structure. Playoff hockey sometimes is about how many shots you're willing to block, how many puck battles you're willing to win, those things. And, and I felt we were 
we were a little under Syracuse. Not a lot, but enough to lose two games. Um, and then in game five, we were 51 and 35 in puck battles, and we were we blocked 36 shots. And 36 shots, a lot of blocks. And a lot of them were not stick blocks. They were body blocks, guys selling out because they love their teammates. The only block shots when you love your teammates. See, that, that's just the reality. It's, it's a miserable thing to do. Um, nobody wants to do it. It hurts. And teams that block shots for each other love playing for each other. And I think that they gained a lot of, uh, they've earned a lot of trust from one another uh, through going through that. You guys did a similar thing last year, going on the road, game five in Utica, got swept by a good team the next round. Can you learn anything from that experience last year? Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, and I, I addressed that in the locker room after the win. Um, celebrate, enjoy you, because you do need to celebrate your victories, uh, small victories daily, big victories like that. You do need to take a moment and, and enjoy things and, and, and relish the things you've earned together. Um, but, you know, uh, last year beating Utica kind of felt like he slayed the dragon because they were the number one team all year, right? And they were just so good and the best team in the American League. And maybe we got a little too high then and then maybe Game one in Laval didn't feel like we had the same level of uh, urgency, intensity, emo emotional connection to the series. And then we did in games two and three, but now you're fighting from behind. So, you know, that was something we briefly talked about there just to get their minds spinning on it. Enjoy this, but let's start processing tomorrow. And then, and then I think we addressed that yesterday um, that we want to come out, you know, in attack mode, uh, period one, game one. Doesn't guarantee a win, but it gives us our best chance to win. Do you sense that mindset practice this week? I have. I, I like today a lot. Um, I, I like today a lot. But but I'd say, and I've said this all year, this this, this group has practiced really well um, almost all year. Uh, it's been a real impressive trait. And I think that they, they follow their captains uh, very well in that regard. And then Toronto, you know, number one seed, but they've struggled down the regular season, obviously advancing the playoffs. What can you take away from maybe what they – got back to what they were doing in the playoffs? What can you kind of take away from uh, their team? I think their struggles down the stretch at the end of the season is just there was simply the, they, had, they didn't have a lot left to play for. And so I don't really look at that as an indication of where their team is at. I look at the last series against Utica where they, they you know, beat a really good team three games to one. So, um, you know, I've been impressed with them all year. Uh, they have, they're fast. They're, they have good forecheck. Um, they're going to the net extremely hard. I thought they had as much contact with Dawes as we did with Legacy the last three games, and, and we're a team that tries to pride ourselves on that. Um, so they're making it hard on opponents' goalies. Uh, I think their captain is, is outstanding. Shaw's had a special year, but he, but he has a uh, he has a real aura about him. You, you can see that you know that that I don't think there's a massive difference in skill level of their team last year versus this year. I do think Shaw. Is, seems to be bringing guys into the fight with them pretty darn well. Um, so we know what we're, we're in store for this week. Bill? Hi, Seth. Um, you know, Lawrence, I know you weren't around Lawrence the first time, but he had a reputation as an offensive defenseman, and he's come back and he seems just a, a better all-around player. What has he evolved into this year, in your opinion? Uh, it's hard to describe how much admiration I have for Lawrence Pilot. Uh, how much respect I have for him as a human and a player. Uh, he came back here to play in the National Hockey League, you know, um, and, he, and he did for a bit, uh, but for whatever reason, um, you know, he navigated his way back to Rochester. Um, and for a lot of players at his age, um, their level of in commitment, engagement, all in mentality w might be just a little under uh, what you need it to be uh, because of the situation um, and his the exact opposite he is as all in as anybody on our team uh, he is one of if not the hardest workers in the weight room every day the amount of extra work that that young man puts in every day is incredible um, and then watching the the passion and competitiveness uh, within him in this last couple months of the playoff push and then this series um, it just it's just really impressive. Uh, it's really impressive for anybody, but it's really even more impressive considering the circumstances. Uh, and I just speak so highly uh, to what that young man's made of.
Well, kind of. I mean, he had he had a different kind of game on Saturday. But uh, just how I guess I'm trying to search for the right word, but I mean, how much of a horse was he for you on Saturday? I mean, he he, had, he took some penalties, but he scored some goals. It was just an odd game, but I mean, it was it was a pretty clutch performance, I guess. Well, yeah, he got the game winner in the game five game winner. That's as clutch as it gets. Um, <laughs> But yes, I, I I felt this way all series from Lawrence. I felt that uh, he wanted to, he was out there to be a difference maker. Um, and if it was a sh- if it was a defensive shift, he was going to try to be a difference maker by defending hard and blocking shots. Uh, if it was a penalty kill shift, he was going to be a difference maker with his execution, his compete. If it was an offensive minded shift or a power play, he was going to try to be a difference maker with his skill and his mind. Uh, but but and and he and Prow play a and play a lot of hard minutes and a lot of big minutes. Um, but I felt from him all series long and even more so in game five that he was out there uh, to be a difference maker for his teammates.